setting expectations is important, I think, especially when, because more and more, State Farm particularly, it's like they're relying on pulling the wool over the contractor's eyes and just hoping that they'll, they can give those stonewalling objections that most contractors don't know how to overcome. So they just throw their hands in the air and go, well, screw it. I'm not going to waste my, I'm not going to waste six weeks arguing back and forth. But if the homeowner does it, that has a yeah. huge impact because they're the ones owed the money. They're the policyholder. Yeah. And uh, yeah, actually it's stone the, about the stonewall thing. I just got State Farm guy on the phone yesterday. He's like, yeah, we can't pay for this ridge. And we can't pay for the ridge. I said, well, it's high ridge. He's like, yeah, it's included. I said, bullshit. <laughs> I said, hang on a second there, Sparky. Yeah. <laughs> I said, how are you going to include high ridge? Like, our guys are literally going to go up there and cut a bundle of laminated shingles into high ridge. Impossible. No. So we have to buy extra They're shingles. They're two different he's like, products. He's like, well, then we're going to have to we're gonna have to drop your waste factor down. I said, no, you're not because you can't make the roof smaller. I said, <laughs> what, what, what kind of operation are you running over there? He goes, he goes, a pretty good one. <laughs> You're like for you. I said. I said. I tell you what. I'll. I'll send you over all the documentation that'll. That you know. They'll teach you how to properly measure waste on a roof. He goes. I don't need that. He's, he's, by, this, by this point, he was so hot with me on the. He was just. After this, he just. He, he was. He was hot, man. They're ridiculous. Well, the thing yeah. is, you know. They don't. They, they don't have objections for that. Right. Because nobody bring. Nobody. Nobody brings it up. You know, you can see, you know, sometimes you can hear them flipping through pages. Exactly. Like, like what What do I say now? Well, because uh, we've yeah. talked about this before, but it's like, you know, as a salesperson, you go to your Saturday morning meeting and your manager says, hey, yeah, if they're running good t sales meetings, it's like, hey, guys, uh, today we're going to talk about when a customer says this, just say this, you know, to handle objections. Well, you better damn, damn well and sure believe that at State Farm, they got their Monday morning staff meeting. Hey guys, uh, great job last week. We denied 482 uh, requests for Ridge and Starter. We're still, the included in the waste thing is still going strong, so we'll stick with that. Hey, uh, but contractors are now saying they're bringing math into it. So here's what we're gonna say. Well, we'll pay for that, but then we won't pay for waste. So just say that, you know, like they're just, that's what they do and they come up with these Honestly, it's brilliant, Nick, because it works. Yeah. Obviously, most people don't know how to overcome them. But those blanket objections, it's like nobody knows, for the most part, what to do. And so it works most of the time, unless you know what next steps to take. And you obviously know how to do that, and so do I. But that's why they do it, because most people don't know how to overcome those objections. So Yeah, but unfortunately, with stuff like that, it really drags the job out. It can, and sometimes it, drag, it, can... drag, it drags the supplement out. Yeah, and choose your battles. I mean, when I was actively doing this, I wouldn't spend two weeks. If something was going to take me more than seven to 10 days to get a supplement approved, I would bite the bullet because I know that it's opportunity cost at that point. Don't let it drag out. But that's why most of the time I wouldn't really fight over the ridge and starter stuff. Like I would go for the big ticket items that I knew I could get approved without the resistance, like the things that they don't have a rebuttal for yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but anyways, that's, you already know all that stuff. So. <laughs> obviously, obviously, we still make mistakes. So. Oh, sure. It's good to have little yeah, reminders and refreshers, but we don't know everything. That's true, and it's always evolving too, because you know they they come up with new bizarre rules that they start to use. Uh, you know, in ju in June, they're just not going to pay for ice and water shield. They decide just June. <laughs> it's like you it's a policy. Or you get something like that, and I always, I always say, since when? Name the date and time when State Farm stopped doing this. Right, because I have 11 uh, claims here that have ice and water shield on them. Yeah. Send me documentation. Right. Oh, we don't send you documentation. I said, why not? I, I, I got to spend a week sending you code documentation. The least you could do is you know, send me a reason exactly why you can't pay for something that's a legitimate request. And therein lies the key, too. When you request or you have your homeowner request in writing, the basis of which they're denying a specific line item, 
they turn over most of the time because they can't provide it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> okay. And then uh, another another thing too is if the pipe jacks. Well, we're not going to pay for pipe jacks. Well, uh, just because they're damaged, you know, just because they're not like there's there's no dents in it. However, that these things are 15 years old already. It's a part of the roofing so go, system. So I go, yeah, I suppose you're right. We do. We don't need to replace them, but if you can just if you can write it, you know, write the homeowner letter stating that you're going to take all responsibility if the roof leaks around these penetrations. I guess I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Silence, dead silence every time. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, we can't write a letter like that. I said you're right. Well, we can't warrant a roof. We'll put our name on a roof that we don't show if we're just replacing flashing all willy nilly. Exactly. Except, who knows how long it's going to hold up for? At least if we install it, yeah, who warranted it? If it leaks, it's our fault. <laughs> if exactly. You, if, you don't, if you don't pay to install it, we're not going to do it because we're not going to do something we're not going to get paid for. You know? So right. you're hoping in the backside of this that we're just going to go ahead and do it, just like every other bank contractor out there that's just going to go, well, they didn't pay for the <laughs> yeah, they, They're not paying for the, the pipe jacks, but we'll go ahead and we'll just throw them in there anyway. Right. Even though State Farm paid us three forty a square. Yeah. You know, like, no, what are we going to do? Not put them on? Yeah, get paid for them. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like you talk to your, because we forget that our frame of mind most of the time as salespeople, because we want to keep our customers happy, but we look mm -hmm. at it and we assume that they assume, we assume that the homeowners are expecting us to eat that cost, but they're mm -hmm. not. They hear, my insurance isn't going to pay for it, so I have to pay for it. So mm -hmm. now, when you present it that way, it's like, Mrs. Jones, I, don't, I really don't know what to tell you here. Like, this is what I've gone through with this adjuster. I mean, I can show you the emails. I could have you listen to the phone call if you want. But they're basically trying to force us to, they don't want to pay you, not me. They don't want to pay you to get new boots on. Your boots are 15 years old. Like, I obviously can't pay for them. You aren't supposed to pay for them. Your insurance company is supposed to. So, I mean, we call it the squeaky wheel here. You know, that's what Gary calls it. But it's like, do you want to go ahead and try to call them? Because they owe you the money. They don't owe me. So I tried to take it as far as I could for you. But at the end of the day, you're the policyholder. And they owe you that money because you pay your premiums on time every single month and every single year to have this insurance. Because now they're fired up. They're like, well, what the hell? So don't assume <laughs> as salespeople that they're, them. exactly. Just, you know, as salespeople, don't assume, not for you necessarily specifically, but just everybody, if anybody else hears this, it's like, don't assume that your homeowner is going to automatically point to you. No, it's not about the insurance company not paying you, Nick. The insurance company isn't paying your homeowner and they owe your homeowner. So now your homeowner is going to be like, well, what the hell? I'm not paying for this shit. I'm certainly not going to ask my kind contractor to pay for it. He's done everything he's supposed to do. My insurance company's ripping me off. And then when they toot the horn, the checks come a-rolling, <laughs> you know. Right. But it has to right. be done in the right order and in the right way, so. so. You get a homeowner, he's just like, yeah, you know, I don't really care what happened. Throw some balls. <laughs> and either you fight for it or you're going to end up paying for it. Right. Well, and that's exactly <laughs> it is, you know, Everybody just needs to stop assuming that the insurance company means that we have to pay for it if they're not going to pay for it. Because once it's shifted to the homeowner has to pay for it, the homeowner is going to fight your battle for you anyways because they don't want to pay for it. They shouldn't. And neither should you, though. It's not your house. And when you can explain to the homeowner, like, this is homeowner, here's the thing. Like, I can't even put a warranty on this job without replacing all the accessories. We would never do this. Like, what State Farm or what your insurance company is suggesting that we do to your house is ludicrous. We would never put our stamp on a job like this. So without new accessories and pipe boots and flashings, I can't even put a warranty on this. So you might want to go to your insurance company and be like, I'm not even going to be able to get a warranty on my work without this stuff. Like, what is this bullshit? Because they'll roll over and pay 90% of the time when the homeowner gets involved. So but anyways, fired up, Nick. Fired up about this. Huh. Or maybe it's all the caffeine I've had today. So that's a diet soda. There's still caffeine in it. <laughs> There's just not sugar. How many? How, how, how much? I almost said how many caffeines. Uh, how many caffeines are there in a Coke? 46 milligrams. 
Ooh. That's just the right amount. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Ooh, almost inhaled some there for a second. Went right down the wrong pipe. You know what I think is funny? Choking is like more embarrassing than it is scary, even if you're seriously choking. You just like want to stop <laughs> coughing because you're so embarrassed. But really, you're like, I'm done. People are like, oh my God, are you okay? And you're like, I'm embarrassed. 